Welcome to the Village of Bartlett Committee of the Whole meeting for November 21st, 2017. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to again call the roll. Trustee Cameron? Here. Carbonero? Here. Daney? Here. Cabrena? Here. Hopkins? Here. Ranky? Yes. President Wallace? Here. First item on the Committee of the Whole meeting this evening is under Planning and Zoning Committee, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. We have one item on under Planning and Zoning tonight. It's a uh, conversation about consolidation and of the Zoning Board and the Plan Commission. With that, I will let Mr. Plonzinski run us through this. Thank you, uh, Trustee Hopkins. Uh, this really is a continued discussion from the uh, Last time we talked about it, which was in, back in uh, your June 20th planning and zoning committee. Um, basically what the staff did is we surveyed 20 communities that have done their consolidation, showing that their average being eight to nine members, they meet once a month, four, average four year term limits. Um, we've also, uh, you know, they, they run it conducted on the Roberts Rules of Order, uh, majority of a quorum, all those types of things still stand with the joint meetings. Um, we had, uh, of the communities we surveyed, um, you know, they're, they all adopted them by either ordinance or some type of text amendment um, to, to get that consolidation necessary if we're going to go that route. And then I also uh, copied the minutes in your packet for the last time that we did it. Uh, currently, we're, we're um, and then we put in three ordinances of three communities that have done it, and they've done it in different different manners, but they established the quorum, the voting, the terms, uh, what the goals and objectives and, and the duties of those commission, joint commissions would be. And that's kind of where we're at. I think at the last meeting, they ended it saying that discussion would continue. Um, that's where we're at. We have, right now, the zoning board has six members and the planning commission has nine members. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them and go from there. Thank you, Mr. Plonzinski. Um, well, first, do you guys have a recommendation of what you would like to see? Um, we did not do a staff recommendation. We did the research um, as, and I'll, Whatever the board desires is what the staff will be directed to do and will continue to function. I, the, the setup, whether it's this continued split zoning board and planning commission, we'll still continue to do that, and, or if it's a combined com planning commission. Uh, staff will, will carry out your wishes. Thank you. Jim, do you have any information on the average attendance for each of those uh, commissions? You, usually, um, the zoning board, <laughs> so nice. for a long time, we, we didn't have many more members, and they were very a loyal four members would come regularly. And, and since subsequently, since you've made some additional appointments, we pretty much get full, the full six members coming to those meetings. And plan commission usually is pretty good about having the full complement of the ones that are appointed and attended. So we seven and eight, seven, seven to nine is common for planning commission. May I ask? Okay, this is open discussion, yeah. Jim, uh, one of the questions that came up previously is that uh, the, the board, I believe, was looking for uh, to, to move the process along a little quicker. Correct. And, uh, you know, in my experience, the, uh, yeah. the commissions meet, one, one meets the first Tuesday and they, the next meets the second Tuesday. Right. So I don't know, you know, if we combine it, what are we talking about? We're talking about picking up a week's worth of time. And then there was concern that, uh, that uh, professionals that would have to attend with the uh, with the petitioner, the cost that was involved, and uh, the uh, I don't know what those costs are. I I've never been on the receiving end of any petitioner paying me anything, but uh, but you know I just kind of think that uh, for lack of a better term, and I don't want to be 
know, brutal about this, but, you know, it costs something to be in business. And uh, if they're going to save some money with the, uh, with the uh, professionals that attend with them, you know, that's just the cost of doing business. Uh, I think the system that we have right now works. I think it's a good system. I sit here and I listen to people that have served on those committees for numerous years, many, many years, decades. And uh, I don't know how you can go and tell these people after the years of service that they've given, the dedication that they've given, and the responsibilities that they've had, and what they're doing for our village, and just not say, hey, guys, stop. We've had enough. I think that uh, the development that we're seeing now is nothing in comparison to what we saw years ago. You know, I also served, you know, a good number of years on those commissions, and I remember when we had meetings that would last well into 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, we were there. And uh, then someone told me at that time, you know, you just make, you know, you just make uh, a statement that the meeting will end at 10 o'clock, and if we have to continue it, continue it. I also look at this, and I see where the number of monthly meetings, yes, the average is one, However, there are a number of communities that do have uh, you know, two, two meetings, you know, during the month. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, the commissioners that are there now, you know, if we're going to combine this, maybe we should think about some type of, uh, you know, uh, monetary reimbursement to these people. They're away from their families. They've given up that time, and they do it gladly now. They do it. But if we're going to ask them to attend more meetings, you know, I think maybe we should think about paying them per meeting attendance, if that's the case. The bottom line on what I'm saying is I don't want to create anything other than what we have. I think the system works now. I think it's a good system. I think it's effective. And I think the people that serve on those committees are dedicated and they're responsible people. And they all bring a little different uh, knowledge and insight to the meetings. The CBA has their people, the plan commission has their people, and I would just like to see this go away and just maintain what we have right now. Thank you. I've got some more comments, yeah, but I was just waiting to give everybody else a shot. I agree 100% with everything you said, uh, Trustee Daney. However, the reason, the sole reason that this issue was brought up by me was because at one point we lost the wedding chapel business in this town because of the fact that the zoning board only had three members. I'm, I'm, I am very, very convinced of that. And there was very low attendance and it became a real issue. Anytime there was any kind of a, a, an appeal or any type of a variance, it became a real issue. So that's an issue that the board has to address. When we have an attendance issue that costs us a business, I think we have to address that. Could potentially cost us a business. So that was the reason why we've been discussing this. Was, was, uh, and it, no fault to anybody that's here. I mean, there's, I, I know there's many, many of the commissioners that are very dedicated and I applaud their service. It's, it's a, it's a, thankless effort and they do a wonderful job. But uh, when we've had situations in the past where lack of attendance could potentially cost uh, us an issue because you only have three opinions on a board, that's a problem. Num uh, number two, it does cost less for petitioners. Um, I mean, it's obvious. I don't know what they charge to show up to two meetings instead of one, but I'm guessing it's four or 500 bucks probably an hour for one meeting. So it does cost more to a petitioner, which isn't a big deal if you have one meeting to go to, you don't have a, a variance or anything and as a small business. It is a little bit bigger thing to do if you have an attorney that, that you have to go, go have you represent in both those meetings. Um, and one of the points that you made, Trustee Daney, is very important. When you uh, were back on the plan commission and many of the gentlemen in the audience were back on the plan commission, it was vital to have you guys there vital because you guys were very dedicated and it was a building boom. There was a lot of work to be done. There was all kinds of construction going on. There was housing going on. And I would, 
I would just ask the board, how much more additional construction are we anticipating in this village? Is it, is it growing or exponentially the way it was when you all were in, their, in your highlight? No. So the, the, the final point that I will make, is it necessary to have two separate meetings with the amount of work that there is to be done? So those are the questions that we need to answer. And I do agree with you, Trustee Dana. I do agree with everything that you said, but um, I don't want to be into a situation again as a village where we get into a variance and we have two people show up at a zoning uh, appeals meeting. What I, uh, Three people showed up. What I did is that uh, we monitored the attendance at the plant commission on a regular basis. And if we had people that, uh, individuals that had missed a number of business uh, meetings, first off, I picked up the phone and called them. And secondly, uh, I had staff contact them. And if I remember correctly, and I don't, Valerie would know, uh, I thought, uh, maybe, maybe you would remember, you know, Jim or, or, or Jerry, we also, I thought, had a policy, I don't know if that was in writing or not, but if you missed like consecutive meetings, and I forget that number, like three meetings or something, three, four? Three, yeah, then they were automatically dismissed. This is something that we did on, on, on our own. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility, I think, in that case, the, uh, the chairman of those committees has to be aware of the fact that if we're jeopardizing any business in this village by attendance, that's something that has to be taken care of immediately and it can't go on. And I think that can be done very, very easily, it's still maintaining the current integrity of the plan commission and the CBA and not having to combine them. Just to answer another question that was brought up, and this certainly isn't, um, you know, the final meeting we'll have around this, um, but the way that I would vision this, if it were to be combined, would be a one meeting a month and it would be probably 13 members to start and then losing members at, with attrition as you go down. A, an ideal number would be probably most likely nine, uh, but you'll lose some through attrition. So you'd have 13 to start with three alternates on that combined commission, which means that they can slide right in if somebody's missing. So that's, that's what I could see happening is, is not, miss, not losing very many of the members that we have right now that have served so faithfully for so many years, um, but having them all at one meeting, um, different chairs, um, same kind of information going on in, in both of those separate discussions, um, but that's kind of how I would vision it. So if I think we just need to continue thinking about this and considering what the growth of our community is going to look like as we move on as a board. And the last thing that I want to have happen in Bartlett is what I've seen happen in, in some situations where you're just, instead of people willingly wanting to serve in, in these open commission positions, we're fighting to try to find somebody to fill them. And that's just the nature of, I think, I don't know, you might call it the nature of the next generation. They don't serve as much as... <laughs> your generation love to serve. And it's harder to find people that are willing to give their time. They're, they're too busy. They're, they get very busy and they don't want to serve their community in those uh, uh, dynamics, um, which is very uh, honorable for the folks that have served so long. But I think it's a reality that the board has to face. And, and rather than um, just jumping at a conclusion down the road here and, and just stopping it all of a sudden, I think it's just an ongoing conversation that we should be having about the responsibility of making sure that these commissions are doing what they're doing, they're enjoying what they're doing, and they're all, uh, they're all, um, they're all uh, contributing. So. Mayor, if I may suggest that we watch the <clears throat> attendance on the boards for the next six months and take a temperature again. I think that would be a good idea. <clears throat> Unless somebody feels really adamantly about moving forward with more discussion about the combined one. No, I think that'd be fair. Let's go through uh, uh, 90 days, like look at, look at it for the next 90 days, see what the attendance is, and, and just get a, a feeling for the members themselves. Um, uh, are some of them serving because they just are dragging themselves there, or are they really enjoying serving? 
which and I'm hesitant to even bring it up as far as you know, I appreciate guys that have served on the uh, committees for so long and there's absolutely right trustee Denny's absolutely right it takes a lot of effort to put into it and everything else and yet I've said on other uh, organizations where over after a period of time you're actually asked to take a break and and that gives people a chance to come in with new people now the issue we have as I understand is is we're filling those positions but new blood new ideas new thoughts it's never well, I won't say never but it's it's oftentimes a good thing and maybe we should be contemplating things of that nature uh, with and I don't know what other villages do with their commissions if there's a set <clears throat> time frame that someone serves it's all at the goodwill of the president or the mayor um, I just know other organizations I've set on that there's been times when they say well you know thank you for your service I was on a board for 16 years and then they get, gave me a award and said thank you and I said it's time for me to go that's it was fine um, but that's what they said to your face anyway yeah exactly <laughs> uh, but I do think there's a point where I don't want to call it term limits I just think it's it may be that they take a break for a few years and if there's really heartfelt desires to come back they come back um, but I don't know what the other structures out there with the village uh, with other villages and whether there's things to consider like that I think in the research we've done it's uh, you you have both I mean there are towns where commissioners have served like ours a, a lot of ours have served numerous years and then there are some That'll establish, you know, you'd be on for two terms and then give somebody else a chance. But uh, it's not uncommon for zoning board members to last, you know, 20, 25 years in a, on a commission. And, you know, there, and then plan commissioners, same thing. You know, so we have, we have a good dedicated core of people that like to come out and, you know, they're friends. So you get a mix of that. And I think that's one of the secret ingredients that Bartlett has are folks like yourselves that have developed this community into what it is. And it's, it's, a, great, it's a great thing. And, and don't take the conversation as a, as, a, um, as a way to say that we don't think you're doing, you, you, your service isn't really been approvable. This has nothing to do with that. This is all thinking about what's going on in the village now and, and what our responsibilities are as we move forward. So, um, anyone else? No, the only thing I'd like to just add to that, I'm sorry. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think it makes a lot of sense to come back, or probably maybe in six months rather than 90 days, but that's, you know, that's a detail. You know, and, and, and if we see a, a, a natural um, attrition in the committees to combine, them, I, I think that that's where we should go given what's going to happen in Barton. I think the efficiency there is overwhelming. I, I do favor consolidation to committees. But I like the approach of, of evaluating and when the time is right, we'll, we'll make that decision. Or if we all of a sudden start to see some of these large vacant parcels start to develop, well, then it's time to kick it into high gear and really get things moving. So that makes, I think that makes an awful lot of sense. And lastly, and what I wanted to add is I've served with you guys for a good number of years, and I'm very proud to have served with you, and, and I wanted to thank you very much for the service that you've given our village. It was my honor to serve with you guys. Thank you. So we'll review this in 90 six, days? Six or months. Six months. That's all we have under planning and zoning tonight. Thank you, Chairman uh, Hopkins, and thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Okay. Final item this evening on the committee of the whole meeting is the all exciting Finance and Golf Committee Chairman Daney. Thank you, Mr. President. We have the Village of Bartlett, uh, the 2018-22 capital budget, proposed capital budget. Todd. Oh, Paula, I'm oh, sorry. It's going to be Todd and Dan and I. Um, I'm going to start us off with just a little intro. Um, the capital improvements program for the fiscal years 2017-18 through 2021-22 identifies long-range needs and proposes a multi-year financial plan to address them. The five-year capital program for uh, this period totals 
$156,303,424. This is a 40% uh, increase from last year's program. While the capital improvement program anticipates expenditures over a five-year period, the immediate focus is on 2018-19, which is re referred to as the capital budget. These projects will become part of the operating budget that will be developed in the next few months. The capital budget for the upcoming fiscal year is $51,546,389. Funds are proposed um, for a total of 23 projects, but there are four new capital projects that Dan will go into detail on. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get into the budget, um, I put a hard copy of a one-page spreadsheet that's on the screen here. Um, I think everyone's aware of the big projects that we have, the DuPage water stuff, the bittersweet treatment plant, the Devon stuff, but I keep thinking about all the other things, and I wanted to kind of try to give you an idea of where we're at um, on some of those other items. Um, you'll see I kind of broke it up by fund, street, water, and sewer. Um, the street fund, just giving you an idea of our road program and where it's at. We've got roughly 140 miles that we maintain. It costs, for a resurfacing, about $400,000 per mile. If you can get 20 uh, years out of that, um, 15 is probably uh, more realistic for a resurface. But we're trying to do crack filling and these other pavement uh, rejuvenators to try to extend it to that 20. Um, based on that, on the amount of roads we have, that actual cost would be in the $2.8 million range. And as you know, we, we get about a million from MFT. So we're a little bit behind. Um, back in 2012, we, did, we passed a bond and we were able to get a bunch of roads resurfaced. And my biggest fear is that those roads are going to come due again because we're not doing enough to keep up with it. Um, so um, it's something that I'm not suggesting that we are going to jump right to that. We, I mean, there's a lot of discussion that has to be made there. We do have the funds that we collected, the MFT funds that we collected. If you've seen the, the reserve that we have there, I'm proposing, and you'll see in the, bud, in the capital budget that we start to utilize that to try to stay up with our roads. Um, we've had a lot of discussion on bike paths, um, and, and we're, we're doing okay there. Um, I know the bike run committee, um, at the last meeting, they uh, passed a uh, recommendation uh, to increase the maintenance budget um, to 40 or 50,000. If you look at it, based on what we have to maintain, it would come out to about $45,000 a year. Um, that's right now we currently split 20,000. We do 10,000 ourselves and the park district has been putting up 10,000. So what we're proposing is to double that and go to 20,000 for the village and 20,000 for the park district. Of course, we have to get that approved by the park district um, as well, but preliminary discussions have been favorable. Um, again, with the brush program being moved over to the waste hauler, or the, the garbage hauler, um, my plan is to be able to utilize our crews to do a lot of this work, which will make our dollar go even further, because now we're not paying for labor, we're paying for material. So I think we'll be in pretty good shape there if we can keep that one going. Um, storm sewer, it's one of those utilities that every community is dealing with. No one's got a fund for it, but we've got 220 miles of pipe out there that at some point, Will need, need to be maintained and starting to try to figure out what are we going to do when that stuff becomes due. We're already seeing flared end sections at retention ponds and stuff like that that are falling in because of erosion in that. At some point, we, you know, we have to start taking care of that stuff as well. EPA is really pushing towards stormwater these days and making sure minimizing erosion and all that type of stuff. So it's just something to start to think about it. It's out there. We need to do start doing something about it. Um, if we go into the water, we've got 
almost 200 miles of water main that's out there. This one's important because when we uh, signed up for Lake Michigan Water, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources has a requirement by 2019 when we get Lake Michigan Water that we have to have a, they call it um, unaccounted for water loss, or I can't remember what term they use, but basically it's water that you're not getting money back on. Water leaks, hydrant flushing, all those things. Lake Michigan water is going to cost us more when we're buying it from DuPage. We want to minimize it as much as possible. One way to do that is through repairing water mains, and you'll see in the capital budget a water leak detection program where we're proactively going out there to try to find these leaks and get them sealed off. Um, same thing with pump stations. We, we are dependent on getting that water across town. We need to make sure these stations are up and running at all times and making sure we have a program where we're, we are maintaining the pumps, replacing the pumps as needed and all that type of stuff so we have uh, assurance that we're delivering that water to everyone. Uh, and then our water storage, we've got, we painted the Kent Circle water tower. It looks good. We need to keep doing that. Bill Olivia is in really need. That's hopefully scheduled for next year. And then we need to just keep those all on our route uh, program where we're putting a fund aside where when it's due, we have it ready and we can get it paid for. Um, and obviously, when we're, we're going to be doing rate increases with the whole DuPage water improvements, we need to be factoring in some of these long-term, what I call long-term capital, water mains and all that stuff, into that rate increase so that we're putting a capital program together that would follow this. And then on the sewer side, same thing. We've got 157 miles of sanitary sewer. We've taken care of a good portion, but we have a lot more to do. Um, so just same thing. When we're doing those rate increases for the wastewater treatment plants, let's start thinking about putting in a little bit of an increase to be able to keep that capital prog program going as well. <clears throat> and the same thing with the lift stations. We've got 21 lift stations, which is a whole lot of pumps. And we've got those. We took care of uh, one of the dangerous ones. If you remember, uh, Country Creek was 43 feet down in the ground dry pit. So guys had to go down 43 feet to be able to work on those pumps. We took care of that one. We put in submersible pumps and now it's a lot safer. We still have a couple more of those to take care of so we need to factor those in. Um, so I just wanted to give you an idea of where we're at and start thinking about we need to start figuring out how we're going to start funding those things. Um, and then we can go to the capital budget. And I can touch on the new stuff and then open it up for questions, or if you want me to go through the other stuff, we can figure, we can, however you want to do that. Um, so we'll start with the new projects. And as Paul and Todd had said, we got four, four new projects. The first one is the water main leak survey. Uh, I think this will go a long way to tell us where we've got some hidden leaks out there um, that we can get sealed off and start working on that 10% number that IDNR is going to require. Um, what we're proposing here is we actually uh, are looking to get, in this year's budget, um, half of the town done. We're, we're focusing on uh, the part of town where we've had water main, the majority of our water main breaks. We know the water main's old. There's probably mains out there that could be leaking right into a storm sewer or, or a sanitary sewer. And we're hoping we find some hot spots there that we can get in and fix those right away. And then in 1819, we would look at doing the other half so that we know prior to that critical timeline that we're looking at is that 2019 when we take over DuPage water. We've surveyed the whole town. We know where the hot spots are and hopefully we've had them all repaired. It all depends on how many there are and how do we get to them. But that's the plan. And then moving forward, looking at breaking the town up in quarters and doing a little bit each year and just staying up with it. Um, bike path maintenance, I've touched on that. Um, again, my main focus is there is this next year 
having our paving crew try to get some of that stuff done to see how it goes. I think it's going to be beneficial for us if they can get that done. You know, we get a lot more bike paths, and I think we'll be able to stay on, tra on track with that. Parking lots. We've got parking lots to take care of. These would be the village hall lots, the police lot, which will be done with the new building. The plan is to bring, the, as we're finishing the police building and the new lot there, let's get village hall resurfaced. It's, it's in need. We just have been put, we put the brakes on it because we knew all the construction that was going to be going on. Um, so let's get the, that one fixed. We've got the metro lots that will be coming due. Kohler Field is out there. Um, it's going to be needing resurfacing and then just putting a maintenance dollar in there for Vizica and making sure that we keep that leveled out. Um, it's more of just being able to show these are out there. Let's, it's not all just resurfacing. It's doing the seal coating to keep them looking good, crack filling, try to extend the life of them as much as we can. So those type of things. <clears throat> And then we got the storm sewer. Um, again, put a program together where we can start hitting some of the areas we know where there's some storm sewer that is failing. And at the same time, working, we have, like on wood, uh, we've addressed a lot of the major drainage issues. But now we've got the backyard, what I call the backyard nuisance type things. This would allow us to deal with more of those type of programs where we've been doing, we've been pretty good, successful this year. We kind of did a, a program where we're doing like a cost share where it's, it's several neighbors have a drainage issue that was kind of created between the neighbors building sheds or fences or whatever, working with enforcement, you know, to make sure that that stuff gets cleaned up. But at the same time, putting in a tile that needs to maybe, you know, there was a tile there that needs to get replaced and working on that. It's more of a local uh, storm sewer and keeping that project because that's, that's one of our main calls that we get now are, I've got a puddle in my backyard type thing. We want to be able to address that stuff as well. Um, and then we get into the 2018, 2019 project. I don't know if we'll, you want me to continue or if you just have questions on any of the projects we put in there. Can any of the, um, the costs of repaving or repairing the village parking lots be paid from the bond, uh, bond proceeds for the police station? I know we, we cut about what was $180,000 from the police station budget. I know that we do have some money, 180000 that we saved in our actual, this year, the parking lot from the general fund is 120000 what's listed in this capital budget. For our general, uh, the, the bond issue was issued for the, for the police department, so we would have to check the parameters as far as what the bond funds can be spent for, but we do have that um, non bonded money that that would be available from that uh, you know I know that the bond covers for the parking lot across the way okay. um, it would cover f I think we would have to check and see if it would cover the front parking lot wouldn't cover the back parking lot though because that's kind of a, the village side and all the new parking for the police department is really in that new the, the new parking that they're building on this side of the street and the new parking that they're building on the back side. So we'll have to see if this front um, would be considered okay to use for bond proceeds. Okay. Thank you. If there's a couple points I'd like to point out if no one has questions on the projects. Um, they're so the exciting. <laughs> One thing, a couple things. We're just um, riveted back there. <laughs> on the water main replacement, one of the items you'll see on, on the capital line item, we're looking at including a lead service replacement program. This would be like a cost share for residents that have lead services. We know we have to deal with it. The EPA has mandated that we have the survey done by April 
or at least have a, a start of a system. And I'm, it's going to get to that point, I think, where we're going to need to start looking to replace it. I think it, uh, similar to if you think of the overhead sewer program, we're kind of following that type of thing, but more of like a 50-50 program where the, the village would be willing to pay a portion and then the resident would pay the other portion. Um, we're actually looking on, on the sanitary sewer system side, incorporating not only an overhead sewer program, but a lateral, so the service from the main to the house. Because we've lined, like in the old part of town, we lined our mains, but we're still getting a lot of water. We need to take care of those services because they were installed at the same time. So um, looking at the same type of thing, do a, like a 50-50 or a not to exceed cap where resident uh, wants to, you know, some residents are every year having to have their line rotted. Well, they can eliminate that if we go in there and line it. We're going we're gonna to get pricing when we go out to bid for our lining project. We're going to put a line item in there for lateral service. So we'll know what that cost per foot is, and we'll be able to share that with the residents when we're in the area and say, hey, we've got this price. If you're interested, let's sign up. We'll do a cost share on it. So it's all things that will help us with our hold the bond situation um, and keeping the stormwater out of the sanitary sewer. Um, we do. We are moving along with the IEPA loans for both water and sewer. We actually have a public hearing scheduled at six o'clock before the next board meeting, which is required. With the uh, this is for the water side, the EPA requires us to basically present the projects uh, because of the money that's involved, the rate increase, you know, talk about the rates that are going to be involved, uh, and then give a comment period for residents to be able to respond to. And then we'll, we'll have the same thing probably, at this point, it'll probably be in January for the sanitary side with all the bittersweet improvements that we have out there. We'll have to do the same type of thing, a public hearing to, for that. Um, oh. On, on DuPage Water side, we're moving right along. Uh, DuPage Water, I think I might have mentioned this. Um, DuPage Water has a transmission main out to bid. It actually is opening on December 12th. So we'll have some numbers there. Uh, knock on wood right now, things look like they're coming in decent. So hopefully it'll be under budget. Um, and then we're moving along with our pump station uh, design and the water mains that we need to do to get it across town. Those will be going out to bid probably late winter time frame. We can't really award it until July, which is when we should get the notice that our EPA loan funding has been approved. So they won't allow us, they, the EPA will not allow us to award the projects until July when their budget starts. So, um, and then on the uh, wastewater side, um, as far as we had a meeting with uh, regarding Devon, the last meeting, uh, we met with MWRD yesterday, actually. Um, I'd say the meeting was very positive. Um, they, we talked about some different options. Um, right now, where it looks like we're headed, or at least we're going to research and see if we can make it work, is they threw out there, if you build storage, We'll upgrade the lift station, and then we will utilize the storage and take all your flow. The VON would then be eliminated in the discharge point, and any permit requirements for it would go away, which is a great thing. Now we just have to work it out. <laughs> the biggest thing right now is the storage that's involved. We're talking a lot of gallons. So, um, I think it can fit on the Devon site, but it's talking a big structure and having to go through an approval process and all that stuff. So those are things that we're all looking at to see what the costs are and kind of go from there. But um, it's it would be a good thing if we can make it work. But we'll see. We'll continue to work on that end of things. Are there any other questions? I think I covered. So in next year's budget, the. Uh... Bill Olivia Water Tower will be. That's scheduled for eighteen nineteen. If you guys approve it. <laughs> Was that the water tower that we were going to paint, but it came in over budget? 
that was actually Oneida. Oneida. We rejected bids on that and ended up moving it over to Kent Circle, which was in need. Bill Olivia is definitely due. Yeah. So. Do you think the bids will come in favorably? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to put Village of Bartlett on it now, right? We have to look at that because there, there could be an agreement. <laughs> That would be the plan, yes. I joked in staff today I'd like to just put Comcast on it and they can pay for it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Comcast or put some wayward finding. Um, you know, where, where's Bartlett Hills? It's over that way. <laughs> Arrow, big B out Arrow, that would be awesome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Okay, so uh, just to wrap up then, we, we are going to be adding the ITEP 106,000 to this number. Uh, we'll bring it to the Board for final approval resolution next meeting. Uh, that will bring it up to fifty-one million six hundred and fifty-two thousand three hundred and eighty-nine dollars. Anything else that concludes what we have, Mr. President? Thank you, Chairman Daney. That concludes our committee of the whole meeting this evening. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Trustee Kammer, second by Trustee. Carbonero, will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Carbonero? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Daney? Yes. Gabrenya? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. We are adjourned.